cyberspace uh what's going on here uh we are live we are live but why is that picture not showing up on my share screen uh oh <laughs> uh oh surely no Com- there we go there we go yep 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 there it is yeah we gotta have bigfoot there bro Reading news. I love Bigfoot newscaster there. Huh. Well. Okay. Uh, yeah, good, good evening, Cyberspace. Welcome to, welcome to the Bigfoot News, episode 11 for March 29th, 2024. I'm your host, your guide, Squat Detective Steve Calls, along with, right down there, the co-host with the most, Mr. Chris Bennett. Steve, good to see you, man. Uh, uh, we, technical difficulties, you know, right out of the gate. That's great. You know, it keeps you on your toes. <laughs> I hope you guys are like been enjoying nicer weather here. Like, we've had sunshine the last couple of days, but it's still been like in the 50s and stuff. But I think it got a little warmer today, but a little chilly. But, well, man. most of my snow has been gone, so that's that's good, good news. Good. Most of it, most I still got 25% of two feet left. <laughs> oh, wow, that's a lot of snow. What about the neck? Still kicking? Still bothering you? Of course. Just, just of course. don't do nothing stupid. You'll be all right. You know, if I do something stupid or not, it isn't going to make a difference. It's going to hurt don't be anyway. out there. Yeah, but don't be out there shoveling snow. Oh, you. heck no, no, no. Don't do that. No, not at all. So, uh, busy, uh, not so busy news week, but a couple of interesting stories this week. Yeah. Um, but we'll get into much more in a bit. Uh, Let's do our roll call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in at number one today was Relic Dominant, who said, have a great show. We'll catch it tomorrow. Good to see you, man. Lester Taylor said, I'll take second place. Lester. (laughs) And Don says that Lester must have the stopwatch in his hand. (laughs) Max Powers, Bigfoot Hunter. Welcome, welcome back. Max, welcome. And uh, let's see, Daniel Weeks. Hello, Daniel. Daniel. And we got Helton, a.k.a. Faster Man, Martin Man. Stiltz. Uh, Ristol, good to see you. Tom Connolly, hello. Tom. Arthur Watch. Arthur. Gary Johnson Sr. has reported for duty. Jonathan Wilk. John Wilk, good to see you, my brother. Huh? And uh, who else? We got Kaiju Ninja 1985. Hello, hello. Ninja I know you Ninja- been- yeah, I know he doesn't catch yeah. all our shows live, but he is a follower. So yeah, uh, good to see him in the live chat. So Damn. here we are. Um, good Friday. Yay. Easter <laughs> is Sunday. Yes. Eclipse is Monday. Uh, actually, that's a. Oh, wait a minute. No, no. I think that's like on the uh, the day after next Monday. I think next yeah. Monday. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, that's that's gonna know. be cool. It's gonna be cool. A big wide area where it, in a, a band runs across the United States. I think it said it was like 200 miles wide. We'll have a complete solar eclipse, and that's really uh, that's something uh, you, you don't get uh, very often. It's probably gonna be cloudy here. Uh, well, probably. Yeah, yeah. Well, when it gets dark, you'll know it's happening. Right. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> You're uh, like that, that's pretty cool though. You know, it is kind of creepy uh, to to uh, witness a solar eclipse too, because uh, that makes you think about what did the the ancient peoples think when this things happened? They're like, "Oh my god!" You know, right? <laughs> panic, mass panic. Ah, the sun is dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Oh, what was it that there was a a, a movie? What's that movie? Is about the Mayans uh, or that? Oh yeah, Aztecs. I can't remember. Jonathan would call it. Jesus would call it Bad Friday. 
<laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, true, true. I wouldn't necessarily call it a good day. I'm okay now, but last week I was in rough shape. <laughs> but, uh, you know, everybody, you know, enjoy your holiday. And uh, If you don't celebrate the the, the Christian religion of uh, uh, Easter or, you know, pa- uh, whatever, the, whatever they're called, Good Friday and uh, the Rising and all that, that's fine, too. Just, you know, appreciate the time off. <laughs> yep. You know, uh, rough week last week. I, I I went to see my to my doctor. Mm-hmm. I said, Doc, every morning I get up, I look in the mirror, I turn around, and I throw up. What's the matter with me? He says, I don't know, but your eyesight's perfect. <laughs> <Ba-dum, boom. laughs> right. uh, you got to add one of those drum rolls into the into the, the sound box. I do. I do. I do. Oh, Kaiju Ninja got it. That movie was Apocalypto. That's oh, right. God. Exactly. Apocalyptico. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was a very cool show. It had that solar eclipse and then the, the sun came back. Yeah. Apocalypto. Apocalypto. A good movie. Good movie. But that's been several years ago. It was it was a good movie though. I enjoyed it. So I am going to uh I'm gonna reach out to uh, a director. Relatively, uh, probably the most famous director we will have had on this show. We've had a bunch. Uh, remember we and we had a couple of actors. Remember we had that one Bigfoot movie that was going really well till the very end. Yeah. Um, and then uh, didn't we have the people with paper dolls on many many paper years dolls? Ago? Yeah, I think they did change the name of that movie to something else now. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had a. The actors and directors of Paper Dolls. That was good. So, all right. Well, shall we get to our first news story of the night? What do you think? Oh, sure. What we got? All right. So, coming in for the first uh, news story of the night. Here it is. So, uh, this is an update to a story we did a couple of weeks. uh, Last week, I think we talked about uh, reported in the Chronicle mm. of the uh, the the three folks on the on the mountain on the the bikes, and they had seen a ten foot. So there was a follow up story, and it says high school cross country runner mistaken for Bigfoot. So uh, and uh, the quote from the um, it moves so fluently with little arm movement, unlike a human being running or a passing motor cyclist said it was easily 10 feet tall. Recently, the Bigfoot Field Researchers, Researchers Organization investigated a sighting of the eponymous. Epon- what a word. Wow. <laughs> Who uses that? I don't. You know, let me stop there for a second. You ain't going to get a friggin' Pulitzer for this article. <laughs> right. Exactly. Talk to the people like they're the people, not like you're some existential, uh, you know, extra verbiaged individual. Yeah. Like, just talk it, it like kind of like reminds me thing. of the, the Jacko article, you know, that was written like in the 1800s. <laughs> but that's the way they talked. Yeah. It, you know? That's where they wrote. But every once in a while, you know, they, it, I don't. Anyway, I'm just going to move on. Uh, near the ground, uh, the ground bound. In Washington State, the Ground Mound. Oh yes, we used to have a restaurant called the Ground Mound up here. Just curious. The Mound. The Ground Mound. Very cool. Sighting by a group of motorcyclists passing through South Thurston County involves spotting a figure running on a ridge a half a mile ahead of them. According to the report given to the BFRO, it was a large. It was very large in human shape. It was one color, tan brown, moving across very rugged terrain, making a beeline for the tree. The group watched the figure run for thirty seconds before it left their vision. It moved so fluently with little arm mo- movement, unlike a human being. The motorcyclist said it was easily ten feet tall for us to be able to see it from them, uh, able to see it from so far away. After the story of the biped sighting was reported in the Chronicle and shared thousands of times via social media, the paper received an email from a Rochester, and that's for a Rochester, Washington high school student, Gunnar Morgan, a cross country runner, self identified himself as the creature. That squash running was me, Morgan said in an email to the paper. 
Uh, in that, in the email, Morgan, who is not ten feet tall, explained his case of mistaken identity. My cousin and I are adept across are adept cross country runners and live in the area and run often in that exact wilderness area. The reason we appear larger than usual is because we're running side by side and we run extremely fluid compared to most people. Morgan's Gar Garmin GPS watch provided data that showed he and his cousin were running along the same ride along the same time, I should say, the yeah, same time yeah. at the moment at the same. Yeah, the he same, was he's yeah, too busy was, trying to work on his uh, fancy words that he forgot to work on his sentence structure. Yeah, right? he wrote, <laughs> we're running along the same ride at the same time the sighting occurred. Uh, no, you're running along the, at the same time at the time the ride and the sighting had occurred. Um, we were running fast and headed for a tree line. Morgan said, I can pinpoint exactly where the motorcyclist must have spotted us, and where we must have been. I stand six foot one from a distance. We could be mistaken for a larger creature. Yeah. While Washington State tops the nation in what BFR deems credible Bigfoot sightings with the 708 Morgan himself says that he has never seen the, the and he's got they got to throw in the mythical creature the mythical creature while running in the area but loves right. the attention it is brought and he goes I think this story is all very funny well, so hey uh, you know hats off to Gunner Morgan for stepping forward and saying no 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 guys right. that, that wasn't a Sasquatch that was us right <laughs> and the, the fact that his GPS watch backed up the whole right. story huge too. Oh wow, Walt! I just I was off looking at an article. Look at here, Walter Kroll. Walter. Oh my goodness! Thank you, Walter. Thank you so much. So there we have it. There, there we have that. Now we have three uh... mystery solved. That one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. Really, you know, how could somebody mistake one a running guy? For somebody that's ten feet tall, but well, then he said he was running with his companion. And you got to understand, right? Um, uh, you got to understand they had observed this right. from two hundred yards away. Right. That's a that's a pretty I remember, good distance. Yeah. I remember, I had said that in the first thing. That is a pretty good yeah. distance. Yeah. So if one is running and another one is running up, let's say. The path of running is not the same. Yeah. And maybe cousin was here and he was on the hill and he's six foot one. Right. <laughs> and like I say, how can you tell, you know? <clears throat> well, you know, if you're looking the distance uh, of one football field, that's a lot. A hundred yards is a lot, and it's more than you'd really think. But when you stack another one on there, <laughs> that is a long distance to see something moving to try to identify. It. There's just right. Really well, the other the other thing too is you got to understand that at two hundred yards, how accurately are you going to deem somebody's height? Oh no way, no way. You have no idea. Right. The, the only chance you got is if you can see them standing next right. to something. <laughs> that right. you can go back and measure later. <laughs> that was a pure ballpark guess. Always oh, ten feet tall, you know, from that. And once they start saying things like ten foot tall, that's when flags go up because ten feet is pretty big, and that it's would big. be pretty, pretty friggin' obvious if something ten foot tall was walking yeah. around, let alone eight foot. Yeah, uh, I mean, eight foot's a, a big, big step, but ten foot, that thing would have a foot, you know, massively, you know, right. um. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I can understand them misidentifying. I mean, think about 200 yards away. And if you want to test it, uh, just measure out 200 yards and uh, put something there and walk out right. 200 yards and see what it looks like to you. Exactly. You know. Um, now, uh, I'm, I'm a firm believer that there are some big old boys out there. But uh, yeah. if you see, if you were to see one, I'm pretty yeah. sure that it would you would be, it would be ingrained in your memory. Uh, now, John, John Wilk makes a great point. So eyewitnesses uh, are always as overestimating. Uh, and there's a good reason why, because when you get over the seven foot level, uh, when you start going seven foot, even maybe the eight foot level, but when you start getting over the eight foot level, say 
your accuracy starts to drop big time because now you're looking at an angle like this. Yeah. And when you start looking up at something, I mean, I, I can stress how big our parents looked when we were like little kids right? or, or how big our grandparents looked when we were little kids. We still think, oh, wow, these people are huge. They're very tall. And then you yeah. find out that your father's five foot ten, you know, or you find, you know, well, so. That, the one of the things, too, I think about some of the witnesses do this. Now, I'm not saying it's everybody, but some of the witnesses that are maybe adding in some a little additional facts to their what they actually saw. Uh, they might want to make sure that that their version is uh, above human range, you know, so people would, wouldn't question them that, oh, that's probably. Not human. Well, you know what? Yeah. You got to look at it from their, their aspect too, is that um, it is entirely possible that the, uh, the runners were at a slight height advantage over them because of grading. Right. right? So to them, they may have been 10 feet tall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you were to take a straight level level and put it in the ground, perhaps they were like, maybe the ground was three feet higher at the point they were running than where right. they were at that. So that would make it very easily them to say, well, it's got to be 10 feet tall. Although a slight grade may look like, you know, it's level. It may not be. And that's another, another big thing too, is, is the, if, the angle they were looking at it. If they're uh, in sync running and one of them is like up the bank from the other one and they're right side by side, it kind of looked right. like one individual. You know, you could see right. where that might fool them. I'm just glad that it's all sorted out, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, very, uh, very interesting story. And it, it, it has a lot to do with perception. The mind can perceive things very strangely at times. And especially, don't forget, they're on a on a motorcycle riding too, so you have that stressor and that movement uh, combined with the movement of the two figures. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you, no surprise that it, it got overestimated at all. Um, usually, where you get more accurate estimates, uh, like talking to Brian Goslin, you know, he was twenty feet from his subject, right. And he was able to say, and he's a trained observer to boot. And he says, well, it was, a, it was at least seven feet tall. And he didn't want to estimate any more. Um, and, you know, that it is what it is. And then you have other people like mine. When I had my sighting, we, we measured it. And it was definitely seven foot, six, eight foot tall, um, you know, estimate. I mean, it could be, it could have been seven foot eight. It could have been seven foot ten. It could have been eight foot. Um but the best we could estimate it was about that height. And of course I was only 150 feet away at, at max. Right. Um, so I, I look at that and uh, it's, it, it can be very tricky at further distances. I mean, if something was down the road, you know, a hundred yards, I don't think I'd be able to estimate how tall anything was to, to anything no. exact. No, um, you get to be a lot closer. Yeah. That's why I would, I would always suggest if you're out in the woods and you're out and about and you accidentally get struck by lightning to have this sighting, okay, you win the lottery and you see a Bigfoot, look at the tree. It's going to be standing next to a tree somewhere. Look at the tree. Look for features on the tree. Right. Look for the limb. But, 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 do that, but do that afterwards before you leave the area because, you know, Chris, you, you finished my book. And you know what I'm saying about, mm -hmm. do you think, you know, getting a height comparison when you're seeing something that's not supposed to exist in your mind, right? Um, and, and the other thing, too, is we have to look at the, at, at the bike riders or the motorcycle riders, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you think about it, that word, the term Bigfoot, just looking at the whole psychology of things. Yeah. If somebody was that far away and they they had seen it, right? Um, what made them go to Bigfoot unless they really know about Bigfoot? So, like I say, any good interview, we would know whether or not they had an interest in Bigfoot before this sighting. Oh, yeah, I know about Bigfoot. Well, do you believe in it? Did you believe in Bigfoot at the time? Oh, yeah, I did. All right. So it all starts to make sense that, that their mind could, uh, 
you know, even by pareidolia, uh, seeing that subject off at a distance, even though it's with your live lifetime eyes, pareidolia can happen. Yes. While you're, while you're, you know, there yourself. So. Uh, Jeff Hey, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff says the Squatch and I, Squatch I and my wife saw was about fifty feet away, and we could both clearly see that it was a female. Wow. Yeah, and that's no surprise. Fifty feet is not really that great of a distance. Yeah. You know, it, it's uh, what? It's not bad. Maybe about, uh, I mean, 20 yards is 60 feet. So it's less than 20 yards away if you much. Yes, it's, yes. It's like 15, 15 yards is 45. So it's about maybe about 17 yards. Yeah, not much. Yeah. No, nah, not much at all. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good distance. If you can get right. uh, from 25, uh, 25 yards or closer, wow. All right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. All right. Yep. Okay. Uh, story number two. Close out story. <laughs> okay. Uh, story number two um, is about a phone call that occurred to the Stevens County Sheriff's Office in uh, Eastern Washington State, uh, and they received an interesting phone call from a man looking to hunt for Sasquatch. According to a Facebook post by the Sheriff's Office, the caller told staff that he would be traveling to the area in mid-April and wanted to hunt in the Big Meadow Lake area in Northeast Washington. The sheriff's office staff initially tried to refer to the man to the Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife, but he told them they had referred him to the sheriff's office. The man's what's concern was how to stay legal while hunting in the uh, hunting again. Here we go with that word mythical, the mystical, the mythical beast. In the in the Big Meadow Lake area, because Washington State regulations regarding Sasquatch hunts were unclear, the caller asked Sheriff's Office whether shooting a Sasquatch was illegal in Stevens County and whether a regular hunting license was enough to keep his Sasquatch hunt above board legally. He also said he would not hunt or shoot a female Sasquatch. Stevens County Sheriff's Patrol uh, Chief called the man uh, the man to explain that that Meadow Lake is nearby is in nearby Penn or Real County uh, Sheriff's jurisdiction and that there is no Sasquatch in Stevens County. Uh, we know this because one of our deputies would have accidentally hit him with one of our <laughs> patrol cars by now. You've got the better article. I've got the other one up. You've got the better article. <laughs> now, that's awesome. That is... Mm. Um, that is just a, a real cute way. I like he's not discounting the Sasquatch exists, but we don't have him in the county. Because one of our deputies would have surely by now hit him with a car. Yeah. Which means they probably have had a ton of bears and other critters yeah. hitting that. that, bears that was, and deer, yeah. That, that was a good inside joke that everybody got. I love oh, that. Man. We know this because one of our deputies would have actually hit one of them by a patrol That's car rich. by now. Yeah. That's rich. Mm. Oh, by the way, uh, did, did you hear about the uh, the? Uh, oh, wait, wait, I'm trying to think. Um, I need a soundboard thing on this side too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, um. Did you uh, did you know that uh, somebody had broken into uh, a a. Uh, I think it was the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office in uh, New York. Hmm. And uh, they stole the uh, sheriff. They stole the, the, uh, they stole the toilet out of the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Do, do, do you know why, Chris? What? The, the cops can't solve the mystery. You know why? They have nothing to go on. <laughs> You can boo me now. You can boo me now. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, here we go. According to, uh, uh, you know, again, the, the quote about that. It's almost like everybody's uh, gathering all these stories in the same. According to the Bigfoot Field Research Organization, Washington is the top state for Sasquatch sightings. They have 708 credible sightings, according to the organization. 
1992 resolution established Whatcom County as a Sasquatch as a Sasquatch protection and refuge area. In 1969, Scamania County passed a law forbidding the harming of a Sasquatch. Doing so would re- result in a $1,000 fine and a year in jail. The county la- later changed the law to state that any premeditated, willful, and wanton slaying of any such creature shall be deemed a felony punishable by fine not to exceed $10,000 or imprisonment in the county jail for a period not to exceed five years. Wow. It is unclear if Stephen County has such an ordinance or a law. That is unreal. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, five years, you know. Actually upgraded it to a felony. Yeah. Yeah. That ain't no joke. That's No, that's serious. Yeah, yeah. You lose your right to have uh, firearms and stuff. And in some cases, right to vote, all that stuff. Yeah, that is definitely... Uh, I think we lost a couple of whiskers tonight on that joke. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, you know, the $10,000 fine, you know, that's that's doable if you have a body, you know, but uh, five years, oh, uh, mm. I would be, you know, knock well, on wood, I'll be happy to be here five years from now. And in, in most places, you know, it, it goes to say, like, um, Washington State, in New York, uh, uh, the the village of Whitehall, not the town of Whitehall, mind you, the village. Um, like in my research area, I'm not technically even in the town of Whitehall. Mm-hmm. So none of those protection laws apply where I'm at. Not that I would go out and harm right, one. Right, right, right. I rarely go out even with firearms. Um, but, uh, uh, isn't there some sort of thing on the books to where if your life is in danger, do you have a right to you know, preserve your life to protect your life. Well, it's funny because when I did America's book of secrets, uh, I got interviewed about the law. So I did a lot of research on, on, on laws. Mm-hmm. And, and if there is no law protecting something such as a Sasquatch, for example, right. you know, in Whatcom County, Skamania County, uh, the village of Whitehall, that's where uh, there are specific laws for the Sasquatch. So, this general statement does not apply to it, but if an animal is not in the existent, is not considered an animal or even a, a human per se. Right, right. Um, so I know there's people, well, you know, Bigfoot's a human. Well, hang on, just call your jets. Let's just, it hasn't been classified yet, a human or animal or anything else. Um, the, uh, um, the uh, the fact is, is that uh, if you kill something that's not on the books, the first one's a freebie. Yeah, it can't be. Uh... Right. Uh, there's nothing they can do. There's no law prohibiting you of taking that particular animal, whether you're in danger of your life, whether it's a nuisance, or you're just out there saying, oh, that looks cool. Bang. That is, uh, you know, that's the way the laws are written. And uh, that's where the big fallacy in the whole M.K. Davis um, uh, theory goes is, well, they buried him because they didn't want to get arrested in trouble with the government. Um, You wouldn't because that that law applies in California. It applies anywhere in the United States. If it's not in the books, it's not illegal to take one down. But, uh, you know, well, I think we could probably agree that it's illegal to uh, to take down a human being. You know, that, that's, that's of course, we've got that on the books. That's a law. That's illegal. But there are certain situations to where if that human being was trying to rip you limb from limb, I think you would be justified <laughs> in protecting yourself. You know? Right. Right. Exactly. Well, there's always a, there's always that argument. And, you know, I wouldn't you know recommend anybody go out hunting for them. But. Uh, if you stand in face to face with one and he's going to rip your limb from limb, I mean, I would always choose to go home rather than be ripped from limb to limb. Uh, Max asked a question. I noticed that a large area around the White Hole incident was purchased by the Nature Conservatory. I've noticed that in several areas. Anything to that? Nope. Not at all. Because Nature Conservatories are actually privately owned. They're not owned by the government. So um, there is some some uh, conservancy 
over on the Vermont side, uh, across from the Pulteney River Inn, there's a New York conservatory that bought some property on the opposite side of that. But uh, no, they're not government entities, and, and actually, they're you're not restricted from going into them. You know, you won't see any. You know, you're very. I I've seen one county sheriff down in in uh, research area number two, and that's in Vermont. And I have seen no uh, no New York representatives on the New York side. Um, and like I said, in my research area, uh, I've seen one forest ranger. Uh, back when we were shooting the Nat- National Geographic special. Right. And that's because they had called them to ask them if it was okay. And they had showed up preemptively just to introduce themselves. Have a good night, John. Um, uh, but when the COVID hit, when the COVID hit, uh, we went up to uh, take a day routing out to the area because, you know, what else are you going to do? And it was so right. crowded up there. I not only saw one park ranger, I saw two park, I saw two state forest rangers. Wow. And uh, that was the only other time. And it was just so cra- it was so packed up there. I like, turned around and left. And it definitely shifted the dynamic for several years in that area. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't believe they like crowds. <laughs> no, no. But uh, getting back on the saying is that uh <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, but then again, there's other laws too that may prohibit um, you from hunting a Sasquatch. For example, if you take a firearm into the woods, a lot of times, especially in New York State, you may get questioned, "What are you doing with the firearm?" And in state forest, in state forest, right. you know, uh, when it's not hunting season, and it's not uncommon for people to turn around and ask or answer, you know, Hey, I'm taking it yeah. protection or whatever, but you know, they listen and they'll follow you and they'll listen for those gunshots. Right. Of course. As well. They should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I, I have, you know, I have a, a tin foil hat. I keep handy for some theories. And uh, I think sometimes I'll put the tin foil hat on and I've noticed that in, in some areas uh, here in Kentucky that were uh, relate, uh, excuse me, where there had been lots of Bigfoot sightings, uh, the universities would come in and start buying that property and set up a, a research, a study area for wildlife. Uh, <laughs> and, but that's not uncommon. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. That's not, it's not uncommon for... Uh, so, I mean, we can sit there and uh, 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 relay to us uh, all the conspiracy theories, but without... Uh-huh. Without receipts to it, you know, as to why they're doing it, really, I'm, I'm not a leg to stand on. And it's like, again, getting back to that whole massacre theory, you know, mm-hmm. had that had occurred, uh, you know, they they wouldn't have gotten in trouble. Right. You know, and again, I've always said that uh, you got to look at post of, alleged post offense behavior. This sound like guilty men after the filming of. Patty, no. no, not at all. And their post-offense behaviors are definitely contradictory to any real-life post-offense behavior right. had a crime occurred. Right. And uh, that's why the, the story makes no sense, um, you know, aside from believing you see a red puddle of blood. You know, let's develop the story around it. Thanks. <laughs> and that's all it is, conjecture. This is a red puddle of blood. That means there was Bigfoot killed, probably a lot of them. And, you know, that means that this this must have all happened, but there's no receipts for any of it. Zip. Yeah. And they did all this to cover up a crime that but, wasn't a crime. And, and I'm telling you, uh, you know, MK and his visits to the, the site, did he ever bring a metal detector? Because obviously, we t- knocking down all those Bigfoot, there would have been shell casings. Sure. Right. Well, even no. if they, even if they picked them up, there would have been bullets in yeah. the bodies. No, I'll tell you what he did do was he took some of the dirt and put it in a bucket, and then turn <laughs> would turn around and sell little vials of it at shows for five dollars. That's what he did. The only wow science stuff he did. So, uh, 
yeah. Dirt from Bluff Creek. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Hey, that's a, that sounds like a pretty good little thing. You know, we, maybe we should go up there with a get us a, a truckload of dirt and put it in vials. So, in in um, no, no, no. Um, if there's no ordinance, no, um, there's no ordinance put in place and killing a Bigfoot and someone kills one, is there still a chance they could be charged with murder? No, because let's say they, they realize, okay, it's, uh, a homo, uh, um, snuffleupagus. <laughs> yeah. Let's just, it's a homo snuffleupagus. It's, it, it's kind of like us. It's still not homicide because homicide is defined as killing of a human being killing anything else and even if they turned around you know the next day and said hey immediate law you can't kill these things it's illegal to kill these things right. you can't go back and charge somebody for what happened yesterday right it wasn't a crime at the time it occurred it's not a crime so that's why homo snuffleupagus did that come from the h.a miller doc <laughs> yeah yeah i'm <laughs> And if people are wondering, we uh, uh, we did a members-only seminar on the H.A. Yes. Miller doc, and we, we covered briefly some of the scientific terms in that, uh, in the mistakes that were made there. A lot of fun with that one. Yep. And, uh, wow, a lot a lot of members were there for this. It was great to see you guys there. It's great. Right. Steve didn't get to see you, but I did. I, mean, I popped right. out the tent. Wow. You know, for, for example, uh, and I'll give, you a, I'll give you a very decent example. Um. You know, Billy Bob gets pulled over at age in 1976, gets pulled over uh, uh, by some police. He was in the passenger seat or uh, he gets he gets stopped on the street by police. And they found out that Billy Bob is 19 years old and he was drinking right in the state of New York. Well, in 1976, the drinking age in New York was 18. Right. I, I forget what year, let's say 1986 or whatever, they changed the, the, the drinking age to 21. Mm -hmm. That uh, if that was true, then they could go back and charge Billy Bob for underage drinking back in 1976. They can't do that. You can't go back and charge somebody with, even if it was yesterday, it wasn't a law. So therefore no crime was committed. A crime is by definition is breaking of the law. So if the law wasn't on statute at the time it occurred, it's not breaking the law. Plain and simple. Well, that was something that I respect about my old, I respected about my old base commander. Because uh, at that time in the mid eighties, uh, you know, of course the legal age for alcohol was 21, but uh, he understood that his, his air force guys, even if they signed up at 18, if they were old enough to die for their country, they were old enough to have a beer. And he allowed them to have at the, the airman's club and the officer's club, whatever they could have a beer. So that was, that was pretty cool. And I agree the same way. You know, if you're old enough to die for your country, you're old enough to drink a beer. You know, of course, I don't like beer. <laughs> okay. So let me, uh, Jeff made a comment. Jeff Strader made a comment. Not all Sasquatch Southern have monster feet. 15 to 17 is the average. Well, I got news for you. Um, um, if you get a foot that's 20 inches, it's pretty large, uh, mm -hmm. by anybody's standard because the film, uh, the, the size of the prints at, Bu at Bluff Creek were between 14 and a half and 15 inches long. Right. Right. The prints that I recovered, uh, for the Ford and cast were like 14 and a half inches long. Um, and that's probably the easiest way to determine a hoax. If somebody's coming off and saying, Oh, I got these 24 inch prints. I got these 27 inch prints. It's not called Bigfoot because of the length. It's called Bigfoot because of the width. And that's what hoaxers don't seem to, uh, align themselves or realize too much. Yeah. But I've used some, uh, tracks online that were uh, like a uh, hourglass shape too. I, I couldn't put it together. Hourglass shape. Nope. Mm -hmm. That's why I was 
because that would be indicative that that it's something with an arch or it was just completely made up. Right. Mm -hmm. You got to understand the good prints that have been cast are, uh, they're anatomically functional. You know, when I see the, uh, you see these footprints that some people come up and the toes are like at this angle. Here's the foot. looks like almost like a triangle. Right. Like that's not anatomically correct. That foot would fail. Um, uh, so hard uh, that, that would fail, uh, fail so much. Um, now yeah, Dr. We, Dr. Yeah. Meltram covered that really good on the, when we had him right. on the show, uh, during the Super Bowl. <laughs> that was a, a very good discussion. Wow. Good one. No, no, Jeff. Actually, he's not, uh, called Bigfoot because they interviewed morons. That's not, that's not true at all. The term Bigfoot was not coined by somebody who got a Bigfoot cast. That was a term used for a headline to make a catchy headline. Yeah. The name of the reporter escapes me, but I know it's out there. And he said it's a new type of Sasquatch. It's called Bigfoot. Yeah. And that's why. Well, see, also, originally, they had... Uh, Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, weird, weird, weird. Uh, no, I'm not, <laughs> not in. Uh, it, it, no. It's oh, bad. oh, it's a big footprint. Yeah, if you yeah, want to send yeah, me yeah. a big footprint, that's <laughs> fine. But yeah, I, I don't want to see. You. No. But uh, during the original story, uh, the guys at the construction area had been trying to figure out what it was, and they thought it might be an an Indian, a big Indian living in the the hills there that hadn't come out yet. So, Max Powers is putting their eight foot equals at 16 inches. Yeah. You know, uh, well, hold on. Let's stop a second. What's the scientific basis for that? I'm just saying, we can't talk in absolutes. Yeah, 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 we yeah, can't right. talk in absolutes because we don't know their foot. <laughs> for example, I, I, you know, you know, I, I've gotten reports of a seven foot Bigfoot. Um, an eight foot Bigfoot, and have come up with tracks that are 15 inches, 14 and a half inches, right? So it could be different because of the width. We can't necessarily take our footprint and compare it, you know, height to and because let's face it, um, I, I know plenty of people that are my height that have size eight feet, right? I'm five foot ten. I have a I take a size ten. Right. And I know people that are five foot ten and take a size eight, take a size nine. Yeah. Right. Conversely, I know people that are five foot ten that take a size eleven. Cool. So feet can be dimorphic. Um, regardless of it. it's not like a a straight line. So I you know, I, I would have to say I, I wouldn't try to even compare that necessarily unless you take documented sightings with castings because Patty was seven foot. I think they thought it was like seven foot four, between seven, two and seven, four. And her footprint was 14 and a half inches long. So it's, it's hard to say. I mean, that's just one example, but if we got more examples where a creature is sighted with the trackway, or with some tracks, then we can start putting that together to kind of get a roundabout, but it's still ballpark because you never yeah. can really um, ultimately determine. Um... Yeah, but you know, you, you, you can, it is kind of proportional too because you can figure a track that's uh, uh, 12, 13 inches long uh, and maybe, you know, six inches wide. Uh, if you get one that's 18 inches long and nine inches wide at the heel. Well, you can, you can proportionally say that that track came from a larger individual, but, uh, you know, I did have a mathematical formula for doing that. that I, I rig it up, but there's no, uh, there's nothing to back it up because we don't have enough evidence to, <laughs> to test it. But uh, I think you, I think there's something to that. You could get in the ballpark uh, of determining what height, but not a, not the exact height. So, when Max said ish, I think he's right. I, think he's right. I agree with 
Now I'm looking. I'm looking at Jeff's pictures, and I have some thoughts on them, but I'll go off air on those thoughts. Okay. Um. Thanks, Jeff. Um. Yeah. Um. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of lost my train of thought here. I was on. Well, Jeff said that the guy on the Close Encounters of the Third Kind said he came across a Bigfoot prince that had with 36 inches heel to toe. I remember that. I remember him saying that. Yeah. Wow, that would have been a monster, wouldn't it? Yeah. That's a three-foot foot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, in actuality, the types of soil... Um, the type of substrate wouldn't really affect necessarily. Now there is, there is one substrate that will affect, uh, you know, uh, basically heel with toe length or uh, heel toe length. And that's snow. Mm -hmm. um, sand would have it, its own properties too, because sand tends not to be um, malleable. In other words, you put your foot in sand, take it off and, some falls back in the some hole. falls yeah. back in and doesn't really conform necessarily to what that necessarily is. Now, not for uh not for nothing. Um uh probably dirt is probably the best of all of them. Mud is kind of unreliable at times. Um so there is there is definitely some uh some uh, very uh, now here's a great a great idea is that if you can put some transparent uh, phosphorus type of substance that you can see under blue light mm -hmm. in an area where an air creature would step yeah. right you can shine that area and where you see it missing then you would say oh look Right, something's took a step there. You get an accurate representation of their their print. As it walks away, you can follow it because it would leave bits and pieces of that luminescence as it walks away. Um, so there's an idea uh, to throw out there just for fun. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, what else is there to say? Uh, is that you know, I, I mean, I, I wasn't prepared to do it like a track class tonight, but um, <laughs> sometimes it comes up. And, and what I what I have to say is when looking at a track, you know, the, the, the big things to look at is number one, is it functional? Number one, does it have a heel or a, does it have a rather an arch rather? Or is the heel um, equal to the toes? In other words, if the heel is here, the toes shouldn't be over here. The foot should not bend. Right. You know how many times I've I've seen people come up with their big foot tracks, and here's the toes yes. going this way, and yeah. the heel is going this way. Right. Ah, yeah. uh -uh, that's not a track. Yeah. And you know, Doctor Meldrum, uh, you know, he pointed out different things. I had some questions about it because of, about some of the things that I had seen, you know, on online and, and, and elsewhere. And uh, depending on what the creature is doing at the time that it made that track, that track could look a whole lot different. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're not, they're not going to be bendy like a rainbow. No. Now I, I see Helton said now, if the ones the Indian army found, are we talking about, you know, the Indian, uh, the Eastern Indians over there in, you know, India. Oh, I remember that those, tr those photos they showed like up on the, the Himalayas or something. There was a, in that mountain range what was it was it snow um was it was there snow on the ground yeah those were snow tracks yeah right so bingo there you have it i like i said if you look at my old blog and i may have to revive those pictures mm -hmm. i had uh actually my, my ex-landlord when i step into the snow with his boot and i let that melt for a couple of days and i took a picture of it and uh, it looked like a bigfoot track but it looked really big. It was probably like 18, 19, 20 inches long by about, you know, six inches wide. And it looked like a monster. So I don't trust any tracks in the snow unless they are fresh. Yeah. If you start seeing that, like, like a snow track is sharp. 
just like stepping in mud, right? But if you start to see this type of track where the the snow banks are like this, you know, on the edges where they they're they're like concave and they kind of like spread out evenly to an angle. Uh, if it's not a ninety degree angle, the track ain't worth nothing. Track is not worth that. Here's one for you, Steve. What's the tallest do you think a Bigfoot could grow to? Maybe a little, a uh, few inches over eight foot at most. I'm going to disagree. <laughs> I'm going to say that they could probably grow up to 12 feet. But 11 would probably be pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I think I, I think what happens is when you get something into that type type of size, mm-hmm. now you're talking about something that would leave sign that would stick out to everybody because it's so damn big. Wow! Well, right, like like a bear, like a big grizzly bear will leave yeah. massive amounts of sign because they are larger than life yeah. to the rest of the bears. Um, the other thing too is the caloric intake of something that is that tall. Right. And I think if you get that tall, then it becomes counterproductive to a spine. Yeah. Because now that spine is getting bent to where it's probably easier for that to be a quadruped. Like a lot of our larger animals are quadrupeds for a reason, because they were in the prehistoric times, in the ice age times, they were much larger. Right, right. Yeah, so but you you can't you you can't compare it to the human scale though because our muscular structure supports our skeleton, and theirs is would be much larger, so they much larger skeleton, and plus they would have much larger muscles, so they could support a bigger form than what the human body could. Possibly, I mean, possibly. I I think that eleven foot. 11 foot is taller than my ceiling in my room, my office. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and I'm like, no, nah, they wouldn't be that tall. They may come that's, up to the very right. top. Well, that's what I'm saying. And then I got maybe nine feet, nine feet here, 10 feet. Yeah, usually a ceiling, a normal ceiling in a house is either seven and a half or eight feet tall. Right. And so, uh, the old, the old houses, they would have nine feet tall ceilings and some of them 10 feet tall ceilings. Right. If you, you're in a, a, ho- a house that has a 12 foot ceiling. That's a whopper. That's right. the old uh, Victorian style architecture. That's, that's a whopper. But uh, yeah, you're right. I, I don't think, uh, you know, eight feet is big. Eight feet is big. But uh, I tend to believe they can get bigger. I don't know how often that would happen, though. See, could that be a, a yeah, regular I mean- occurrence or no? I think that would be kind of like, like us. What, what's our average height? Six feet, six feet one, six foot. Well, they used to say average height is about five foot ten. Yeah, we're, right. we're, we're we've grown. Yeah. I mean, the Americans right. have gotten taller right. over the years. But we have we have people out there. We have males. You know, Dustin Hoffman. Uh, let, let's look at the list. Dustin Hoffman, Tom Cruise. Uh, are both five foot seven. Ben Stiller is five foot six. Kevin Hart is five foot two. Mm-hmm. The comedian Kevin Hart. Um, Chris Rock used to be six foot, but after the slap, he's down to five foot ten. Um, oh, um, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Coles. What was with that joke there? Uh, all right. Billy Apes. Right. Billy apes are six feet. Ah, I didn't know they were that big, Jeff. I don't think they're that big, are they? No. That's that's pretty. That's pretty long. Uh, maybe laid out on a table, you know, uh, measured from the you know, stretch of the mouth. Maybe I don't know. <clears throat> nope. Uh, according to. Uh, buzzonearth.com Billy apes are usually from five to five and a half feet tall. Yeah. So yeah, that's they could be six. You know, you could have a tall individual there. The basketball playing Billy right. Ape. You know, you know what annoys me about this article? Hmm. 
They said uh, they resemble the chimpanzee and their footprints are 28 to 34 centimeters long. Wait a minute. You just said five to five and a half feet. Why can't you keep the measurements of the foot in, in inches for God's sakes? Oh, can, we, can we keep it in one or the other? So they're about five to five and a half feet, which I've seen some trail cam photos of Billy Apes and that yes. seems about right. Nope, no, the Juvenies might be at, at that height. Uh, I know we're talking about big footer. <laughs> well, um, I, I tend to think that the juvenile Bigfoot start out just like we do, small infant style size creatures, and uh, they grow as you know they age as they move to mature. So you're going to see all heights. You know, you're going to see some. Three foot tall, four foot tall. So, you know, on up. so their footprints are about 11 inches long. The Billy Ape. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, Sasquatch, we have 14 feet. You see, that's why the footprint versus height doesn't always kind of match up. Because think about it, if you had an eight foot Billy Ape comparing it to the height of their average height and their average foot size. You know, that means a Billy Ape, a seven foot Billy Ape would probably have like a 25 inch track. So you got to. Uh, um, well, yeah, no. I, I think uh, there's something to it. I think so, there is. So could. let's answer this question. I was mm -hmm. wondering if Juvia Prince might look more human until they reach a certain height. No. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, all Sasquatch prints look human because they lack that. Uh, Oppo uh, that they lo lock the opposing toe, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So they all look similar to humans, but even a juvenile Sasquatch print, as I've seen one that was nine inches long, and that was the day after my juvenile sighting, and it was about five foot tall, maybe a little taller. Um, it was really quick when I saw it. Um, but if you look at uh, um, a, a juvenile Sasquatch print. They have all the characteristics of a big Sasquatch print, but they're just tinier. And because their their little toes are a little more bulbous, yeah. um, uh, because they're a little more bulbous, it may give it a little more of a human effect. But they still lack an arch, yes. and that is huge in any Sasquatch print. You see a little print on a on on, on the sand where there's an arch. That's a little kid being. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The small the, the small Sasquatch prints will be flat like the large Sasquatch prints. Now I know this was meant as a joke, but I'm gonna take this one last question before we go. How do we know it wasn't a midget squatch? How do you know it wasn't a midget squatch? Because in dwarfism, right, the appendages are what's abnormally shortened. Mm -hmm. Right, the thoracic area is what's abnormally shortened. The head is not. That's why if you ever look, they you know they look they don't look exactly like you know when you look at little people they do not exactly their their physicality does not look like ours, and that's because uh, dwarfism is a, a chromosomal um, issue. And obviously, I saw a juvenile, which had very, um, how should I say, proportional arms and legs to the rest of the creature. Right, the thoracic right. region was proportional to the rest of it. So everything was within proportion. But it's a, uh, uh, a good, uh, a good um, um, question, actually. Yeah. Yeah. You know, how, how do we know it's not that? And that's, you know, as funny as may have made may just, but that's a good question. And that's how we determine that is that when I saw it, it had nothing that, that would exhibit that there was a dwarf, dwarfism chromosomal issue going on. I'm not saying there might not be a Sasquatch out there that has that, just like there may be a Sasquatch that does grow to nine or 10 feet, just like we have some people that grow to seven and a half, eight foot tall. So well, the pancake eater video would be a good uh, argument for dwarfism. Oh, good Lord. It's a big head on it. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. All right, folks. It is 10 o'clock. We're going to get out of here. 
Um, again, thank you, Walter, uh, for the gifting out five more memberships. Appreciate it. Um, but you see, this is some great, great conversation we have after uh, after the news, and it always leads into uh, would always lead into some good conversation. That's why we do the news because the news leads us to this conversation that we can have with you guys, right. our audience. Yep. And uh, it's a little something different than we do on Sunday nights where usually we have a guest. The focus is on the guest. Here we focus on stories and other types of Open so, discussion. I love it. Yep. <laughs> so, folks, <clears throat> for those who are celebrating, have a happy Easter. And, um, you know, we will be back here in one week live. We're going to be cutting some videos during the week, of course. And uh, thank you, Walter. Yep. Uh, make sure on the way out, y'all hit that thumbs up button for us. That would be much appreciated. If you're not a member and you feel so far inclined and you like our our content, consider becoming a member because we're doing seminars every... Uh, Hello, Iron Dogger. There you are. Iron Dogger was lurking. Oh, yeah. Good to see you. Um, but, um, you know, if you haven't subscribed... Uh, at the very least, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, sub out and uh, hit that thumbs up on the way out, folks. We love you guys. You're the greatest audience we have. On behalf of Chris and me, y'all have a great Easter, and we'll see you all here next Friday night. Don't ask me the date, but we'll see you in one week from today live on the Bigfoot News, episode 12. And uh, keep an eye out this week for video drops because we do have our story of the week coming out this Thursday again. And uh, same to you, Jeff. And uh, we'll catch you all real soon. There we go.